One of the things I often get asked is, how do I best set up my Fibre workspace structure? So for this video, I'm going to run through how I would respond to this, which is actually to ask some questions back and then what I recommend based on the answers to my questions. After you're done watching, you should have a feel for Fibre databases, relations and some field types, as well as a brief detour into user accounts. So here goes. You ask me, how do I set up my workspace in Fibre? And I will answer with this. Imagine you didn't know Fibre existed. How would you describe your process? Now take that description, and my rule of thumb is that anytime you encounter a noun, that's probably a type of entity that should be a corresponding database. Let's do an example. So you tell me, we develop software products for customers. To do this, we have a mix of internal software developers and external freelancers. They work on projects, each of which relates to a specific release of a product for a particular customer. And we have project managers who allocate the developers and freelancers to tasks within each project. Great. So what nouns do we have? Products, customers, developers, freelancers, projects, releases, tasks. Each one of these represents a type of data that you'll want to track in Fibre, which means a database. But before you get carried away making a database for each of them, we should ask the next question. Do any of these types of things represent people who are going to be Fibre users? So in this case, you tell me that customers are not going to be invited into the Fibre workspace, but project managers, developers and freelancers will be Fibre users. In that case, we already have a database for these three types of people. It's the user database. But we need to distinguish the roles they play. So let's add a select field to the user database where the options are project manager, developer or freelancer. Remember, users don't have to cost anything if they're limited to read-only access. And maybe freelancers will just be guests at this stage. What about customers? Let's make a database for them. What fields might the customer database have? Well, I don't know, but you can choose to capture whatever's important to you, maybe location and segment for the time being. And let's make databases for products, projects, releases, and tasks. No need to worry about what space they're in to begin with. Now, what about relations? Look again at how the process is described and focus on the words that link the databases. We develop products for customers a release of a product for a particular customer. So clearly the product database should somehow relate to the customer database. But the question is whether they should link directly or indirectly. By this I mean there could be a couple of ways of looking at this. Maybe every customer purchases a product and automatically gets every release for that product. In that case, it makes sense to link releases to the product and link products to customers. If you want to know which releases the customer has got, you can use a lookup to get all the releases for the products that the customer has bought. Or maybe customers actually choose whether or not to buy each new release as it comes out, in which case you might want to link releases directly to customers and then have a lookup to see all the products that the customer has ever used. For the sake of this video, I'll go with the former. I'll also assume that customers might buy more than one product and products might get sold to more than one customer. In other words, it's a many to many relationship. Now what about other relations? Projects relate to a release, tasks within each project, they're easy. and developers and freelancers work on projects. Project managers allocate the developers and freelancers to tasks. So we'll use an assignments field for this, which is a many-to-many -many relation to the user database. That's just what we need. And similarly to customers, products and releases, I'm gonna assume that it makes sense to add the assignment field to the task database and then use a lookup to get the users who are assigned to any given project. Finally, there's one relation that might not jump out straight away, but seems like a reasonable idea. Let's link project manager users to projects. I'll assume there can only be one manager per project, so I'll use a standard relation rather than the assignees field for this.
And here's a neat little trick. We'll use a relation filter so that the drop down for choosing the project owner is limited to only showing users who are categorized as project managers. So there you go. We have our databases related exactly as we need them to be. But don't worry if you change your mind. Fibre is flexible enough that it can change as your processes change. So to recap, think about how your process currently works and then map your nouns to databases and then figure out the relations. Next thing to do will be to consider extra fields and data views, but that's for another video.